Can we talk race for a moment without everybody scratching? <laughs> okay. I read on Facebook, a couple of people, you know, always, you know, popping up saying, Wendy, why do you always talk about race? Because it's relevant. <laughs> Damn right. And I get that, you know, can't we all just get along? But there's some things that some people don't understand about other cultures. And everybody has their own culture and everybody has their own thing. I can only speak because I'm just black. So I can, I can only speak from black and what I say. And yes, I am a proud black woman <laughs> from New Jersey. <laughs> By the way, <clears throat> attention all white people <laughs> and others. You don't get points because you call us African American. Like that, that, you don't, you don't get points for that. I can't even bring my mouth to say African American. If I ever do it, it's just because of a slip up. I still call us black. Black. It's not wrong to still call black people black people. If you ever hear me say African American, it's because I've been sedated. <laughs> Honestly. Really? I mean, I don't know where you stand on the whole black or African-American thing, but I'm black. And I don't even understand why debating over the Confederate flag is a debate. <laughs> Shout out to all my Jewish friends. What if you walked in the dorm room and saw your roommate with a swastika flag? <gasps> you know what I mean? People don't do that. So as a black person, if I walk in the dorm room and I see my new roommate in September with the Confederate flag, I'm thinking, wait, first of all, racist. <laughs> Second of all, that was part of like the, the slate. Like, yeah. really? Like when I'm down south and I'm behind a car and I see the Confederate flag at a gun rack? <laughs> I don't even speed up to pass. I get in the slow lane or maybe the shoulder <laughs> and drive like five, uh, just let him just go, just, just go. Tay Diggs is at the center of major controversy. Well, in a recent interview, Tay said that he doesn't want his six-year-old son to be called black, but instead mixed. I totally understand what he's saying, but the problem is, is that not enough applications and forms say mixed, you know? So you have to, they still make you just choose, you know, black, white, you know, Asian, Hispanic. They don't, you know, so application forms really do need to catch up with the times. But also, and here's my thought on, on being mixed. Um, it's all good, you know, to, you know, want to acknowledge both sides until you get stopped on the turnpike by the cops at midnight. <laughs> Because all they're going to see is brown skin and well-textured hair. <laughs> and the white part won't even matter. That's all I'm saying. So I like the idea that he wants his son to be, uh, uh, he wants his son to acknowledge both sides. But you, a lot of times that's not practical for the rest of the world based on what you look like. Like, for instance, um, Tay, um, Tay calls President Obama not, uh, or mixed, not black. Well, I venture to say, again, when you stop him on Route 280, <laughs> uh, I don't see a white mother. All I see is a black man. And that's, I, I think that's, to me, the real important thing about being mixed and raising mixed children and stuff. I mean, Lenny Kravitz is half black and half white, but, you know, you don't see, what you see, you know, is hot. <laughs> And I think Drake does a really good job of being mixed because we all know that Drake is half black and half white. And he totally embraces, you know, his mother who is Jewish in terms of, you know, I think he does a really good job of it, but to run away or to somehow, you know, as a black person, sometimes I feel like, you know, people don't want to be addressed as black because there's something shame, is there something shameful about being black? No. I mean, even our friend Raven, she said something about that on The View, remember? And, and she caught fire on the internet. It was just, uh, you know, you know? <laughs> I think it, it's nice to say what you are, but remember, when you look in the mirror, be right with what the rest of the world sees. I do see, and I know you do too, people still give the side eye to mixed couples, like when you see them walking down the street when you're at the restaurant and, you know, a black woman walks in with a white guy, you know, or, or Asian woman walks in with a you know, Puerto Rican guy or, you know, whatever. People still are hung up, but this should not be a thing. I think that people are still small-minded, you know, in this world. Uh, not me, because I think love is love. 
you know, I, you know, you're not gonna test my blackness based on who I love. <laughs> we have some nice white people here at the show. <laughs> let, me, let me just say that. You know, here, here in the audience, you who watch, but most of all, you know, my Wendy staff is nice white people. And sometimes when you surround yourself by nice people, um, they tend to feel like the people, everybody was like, wait a minute, we're still dealing with racism? And I was like, oh, <laughs> you nice white people. <laughs> every day that the dear Lord sends, every last black person feels it in some way, shape, or form, including yours truly. It just goes down. I mean, it's, it's sad, but after a while, you know how to defend and deflect it. Look, everybody's quiet, <laughs> okay? You're leaving me out here to hang to dry by myself. <laughs> One wrong word, I know, I'm ch choosing my words carefully, but what I'm saying is racism sucks, you know, and we can all do better in our own households, educating ourselves, teaching our children to make it better. Racism and values start at home. Suzanne, you know, mm -hmm. your kids have plenty of black uncles and aunts. Yes, they do. I use that in quotes because mm -hmm. they're not blood. Yeah. But you know, they call me Miss Wendy. Yeah. You know, the dearly departed. Antoine. Mr. Antoine. Mm -hmm. And how do you talk to your kids about racism? Um, if at all, or do you lead by example? Uh, we lead by example. Yeah. Um, we never really talk about color. We never did. Right. We never do with the kids. Yes. Um, and they go to a school that's very ethnic, ethnically diverse. Uh -huh. So they're just naturally growing up amongst kids that look different from them. Yeah. And we just, they, they're respectful already. Um, but as far as the whole thing with police officers, we teach them to be respectful of the law and respectful of police officers. And, you know, we don't know exactly how to talk to them about what's going on, but yeah. we definitely understand that something needs to happen, something needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. There really is no excuse, no matter what pocket of this country you live in, regarding teaching your children about racism. And what I learned growing up in Ocean Township, you girls, um, back there, is that, um, you know, everybody is created equal, but, but the world is still a white place. My black parents would always remind us that we are black in a white world. And, and, you know, make our choices carefully, be careful, we're judged even harder, and all those other kinds of things. I think that they did a pretty good job. They weren't as verbal about it as we are with little Kev. Like, with little Kev, we talked to him. My parents did, did it more through showing us by having us involved in, you know, black organizations and white organizations and being around white people and black people and like that. By the time I was nine and a half, I had already been called in, in Ocean Township. Mm -hmm. My brother, excuse me, my, my son is nine and a half, and he's never been, I'm sorry, I should have said the N-word. No, that's um, but, your show. But my, <laughs> my, my, but my son is nine and a half and has never been called the N-word. And that is shocking to me because we live in a totally different time. You would think it would have already happened, but that means that the kids that he goes to school with, the kids that are around him in the neighborhood, the parents are really doing a, a fairly decent job. I don't know, racism sucks. There is clear racism and racial bias in this country. Although, have you ever been hired in the name of affirmative action? Cause I have. <laughs> it's good to be black. <laughs> the thing is, is that black people make TV fun. Oh yeah. yeah! That's it, yes, yes, right? I mean, like when you're watching the ID channel and Fatal Vows is on, or who the, did I marry, and you see it's black people, don't you stop? Yeah. And, yes. When you're watching the Family Feud, first of all, Steve Harvey has elevated the game. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't remember when you used to watch like Let's Make, the De Make a Deal or whatever it is that you watch. Like, just, and it, don't feel weird if you're white, but don't black people make TV fun? Yeah. There's a lot of black talk right now in the first 10 minutes of our show. Please, look, come back to your TV, please. Please come back. We talk race here at Wendy. I'm not trying to make people feel weird. I'm just pointing out the obvious, cause that's what I do. So there's bad news for Billy Bush. Oh. From the bus. You know, Billy from the bus. By the way, he's a bush bush in the bush. Oh. Yeah, no, 
Yep, no, no, he's, he's a Barbara Bush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's one of those Bushes. He's a Bush Bush. <laughs> All right, so he can get another job. You know, I don't know why Donald Trump hasn't offered him something. In the name of the bro code, you boys want to talk about a bro code, that was a bro code for your behind in that bus. <laughs> Good luck, Billy. Um, you know, you're, you're a Bush, you're a white man. This country was made for you. <laughs> My black behind does not feel sorry for you. Hey, I want to say congratulations. You, uh, this is your 10th year of your television show. Congratulations. Amazing. Uh, I gotta tell you, um, I never thought we'd make it this far. Uh-huh. You know, when we first got started, I said, all right, if I'm just on for three years, you know, I will mind my own business and go on about my life. But it takes so much. You know, you've been on for years. Yeah, but less than you. I, I am four years. Yeah, but you're a white man. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I feel like nobody ever mentions that, and thank you. Well, the, the world is built for you. It is, yes. There's a new video of Shia, and he was arrested. And you're stuck in a police force that don't give a about you. So you want to arrest black, you, white people who give a who ask for cigarettes? I came up to you trying to be nice, you stupid bitch. They got cameras everywhere, you dummy. I got more millionaire lawyers than you know what to do with, you stupid bitch. If I have my gun, I'll blow you up. You're a bitch, though. Ooh. Sorry, white people. <laughs> and Asian people and Indian people and other, sorry. But if he was a black man, yeah. honey, yeah. he'd be buried under the jail. <laughs> By the way, he's back on a movie set today. Correct, Norman? That's correct. Yes, mm -hmm. he's back on a movie set today. Yeah. White man privilege. <laughs> yeah. I mean, geez Louise. There's hate crimes going on all the time. But I didn't realize that the hate crimes were, I'm about to describe a hate crime that is so old school. I didn't think that this is the way people hated anymore. Yeah. So LeBron James, he wasn't home. Somebody spray painted the N word on the front gate of his compound. Yep. I didn't know we were still getting down like this, haters. Can you imagine? This is like equivalent to still burning crosses on people's lawns. And we know that the hate is real, whether you're Jewish, whether you're black, whether you're Asian, whether you're gay, whether you're a woman, whether you're whatever, the hate is real out here, but it, it, our, that's harsh. Suzanne, you're Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying, that's yes, what no. if somebody painted a swastika yeah, or something on the side of your house? So upset, so hurtful. It's horrible. <clears throat> Secret truth, every day I go home. I look, I look, is there gonna be a cross burned or whatever? And we live in a very nice community. I can't even look at you while I, I can't even look at you while I talk about this. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to hypnotize you not to be racist. <laughs> every day, every day. We, uh, I have no reason to really be wondering about that except that I'm black in America and even though I have a good job and on TV and stuff doesn't mean crap. If people wanna splash poop on your front door or burn a cross, you know, or tell you something evil, drop a note in your mailbox. Every day, every day, that's my thought when I'm pulled up to the house. Every day, every day. And when my kid goes out to walk the dog, every time. I'm like, make sure that your cell phone's on, you know, the code of the streets. You know, see something, say something, keep your hands out of your pockets, just walk straight. Why are we still dealing with this? Oh, yeah, I still am very fearful. My husband would definitely confront me. I'd call the cops. Like, I'm not confronting. Why, why am I confronting you? <laughs> no, 
point in wasting a good tear. You know, I really do feel like the word nigger, yeah, I'm saying it, it is so watered down that it virtually means nothing to anybody anymore, but it does mean something to black people, certain black people. It means something to me. I don't want to be called it. I don't want to hear you say it. If you're non-black. <laughs> there's, an, there's an exception. I gotta tell you, I got some salty language for my son when I get mad at him. And sometimes it includes the N-word. <laughs> yep. So the Victoria's Secrets models, they're under fire. Behind the scenes video has emerged with them doing a uh, singing Cardi B's Bodak uh, Yellow. And in the word, in, in the song, the N word is in there. And they're all too happy to say it. How do I feel? I feel like there's certain words that even when you know the song, you're supposed to skip over. Like when we play, we play a lot of good music behind the scenes here at Wendy during commercials. I, just skip the word. I, I'm always looking. You know, when, I, when music is playing, I'm always looking at people's mouths like, okay, what are you gonna say? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, am I offended? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, whatever. I mean, we use it so much ourselves, black people, that uh, you almost can't help other people using it too. Only way we can battle it is one person at a time. You know, like, don't you use that word around me. <laughs> you better not. I just want to clarify one thing. Under no circumstances would I ever go up to somebody that I didn't know and just be like, hey, what's up, my It's an unspoken thing between people who are friends who understand each other. Suzanne. Oh, I'm sweating, yes. <laughs> now you know. Yeah. I sit in your office, you sit in my office, mm -hmm. you know, we, mm -hmm. we're buds. Yeah. But if you ever. Oh no, I know. Oh no. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like, really? Oh, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I would never. Suzanne, yes. that would be like me getting lazy tongue because we're buds and talking about, Suzanne is Jewish. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know, oh. You're Jewish. <clears throat> oh yeah. Nobody's calling you no, the no, K word. I don't no. even feel comfortable saying the J-E-W word. Yeah, oh you know people I are do very the full offended. ish. I, but I can say that. You can say it. Like, you know, the control room is full of them, and I can say to them, you, you know, but, but they, but say you, it. I say, hey, hey, Jews, what's up? <laughs> hey, my Jews. Yeah. Yeah, but you couldn't say that. No, I say, hi, Jewish people. Yes. How was your dad? Yes. 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 Well, Macklemore, the rapper, wore a particular outfit to perform, and it has people outraged. He put on a large prosthetic nose, a black wig, and a fake beard. And he performed the song Thrift Shop. And people are saying the costume is offensive to, uh, to uh, the Jewish community. Yeah, you know what? People do need to be offended, perhaps. Macklemore is 30 years old. He sh he's old enough to know better. In this PC time that we live, you can't say anything about anybody, so you might as well just sit down. Everyone, oh, no, all of us, you know? why every single day those double doors open up and I sit here by myself. And you might think that I'm just talking off the top of my head, but I am thinking of, every, like, I don't want to offend any of you people. And you people. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> now look, now, if I was a white woman, that all of a sudden would have been offensive to my people. I, I mean, it's such a, and you know, I'm sure Macklemore didn't mean anything by it, but he's got to be more thoughtful in his outfits. Macklemore is defending himself, and here's what he tweeted. He said, a fake, wait, wait. hold on, I'm a mess. All right, <laughs> oh, fuck you people. <laughs> a fake witch's nose, wig, and beard equal random costume. Not my idea of a stereotype of anybody. Well. I believe that he didn't mean to hurt anybody, just like I believe in my own weird way that Juliana Huff, when she dressed in blackface from that show, Orange is the New Black for Halloween, she probably didn't mean to offend anybody, but she did. <laughs> like, you don't dress in blackface. Uh, that is, you don't, just don't dress in blackface and put a big nose on and walk out of the house and think that people aren't going to be offended. It's unfortunately the times in which we live. Everybody just so damn sensitive. Nobody can take a joke anymore. Oh. oh my God, Luann, I knew you would come with a headdress. Oh Hi, ladies, God. how are you? I am oh, like, who are you? You're Diana Summers. Summers. Get going. Look at Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Summers? Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Excuse me, excuse me. 
Luann's costume is so disrespectful. I think she's tone deaf when it comes to cultural stereotypes. Here's the thing. And you have to take your racism in a case-by-case -case basis. I wasn't offended by Luann dressing like this. I was offended by her stupidity for even attempting to. Because while I'm not offended, people went in on her on social media. There are people of color and not of color every place really, if, I don't know why I'm not offended. I'm not offended by this. I just think Lu Luann is a drunk. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I was, I was Lucy and I was also um, Dolly Parton. Oh, and Wonder Woman. I've been three white people for Halloween. <laughs> But I never got um, anybody complaining about it because I didn't whiten my skin. I just think that when it comes to costumes, you should probably just, it's, it, you, if she kept her same, you know, Countess skin and got a better Diana Ross wig and then walked in, that would have been fine. She does face possible jail time uh, because of that arrest, uh, disorderly conduct, conduct. She also assaulted and battered an officer she would have scrubbed that black skin off real fast. <laughs> see, see. You know what I mean? White privilege. You can assault and battery and they don't arrest you and throw you under the jail right then. Do you know who Eric Walden is? No. My people. <laughs> anyway, he was allegedly attacked by his baby's mother. Well, no, 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 listen to <laughs> Look, that's what she looked like when she did the attack, because that's the mugshot. And um, apparently they're not together anymore, but he was out with his new girl, and I, I, you know, they'd gone to dinner, and I guess they came back, you know, for a nightcap. <laughs> and he puts the key in the door, or opens the garage door, or whatever he does. Anyway, he opens the door to go into his own house, and what do you think happened? This woman down here with the googly eyes. Oh. I'm one to talk. I know what my eyes do when I do this show. I have a disease, Graves' disease. Um, look, this lady right here with the googly eyes jumped out of nowhere with a gun and a baseball bat. Oh. <laughs> look, allegedly. <laughs> you know I love to talk race. And you've been watching now for six seasons. If you're new to the show, just know I like to talk race. I'm not a racist, I'm a realist. <laughs> but as a black woman, the only thing that some of us wonder is, I wonder if his new girlfriend is a white girl. <laughs> Cause sometimes that makes sisters even more angry <laughs> when a man has moved on. And that might, Suzanne, yeah. white ladies. <laughs> like, like, do you know what I mean, Suzanne? Well, no black men have ever hit on me. <laughs> well, you're married. Oh. But what they, what some black men do is some black men will use, like, this was probably his girl when he was on the come up. You know, in college and everything, she put up with all the practices, broke nights, cheating. She probably, she could have allegedly helped him do his work on account of a lot of football players aren't so. You know what I mean? I get it now. And then all of a sudden he gets this four year, Four million dollar a year yep. contract, yep. and now all of a sudden, some black women feel this way. I don't feel this way, but okay. I'm just sharing what goes on in our community because you might never know what is in the inner workings of some black women. But some black women do feel, and this is real, Suzanne. Okay, all right, I'm listening. <laughs> like, like all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a man gets going and makes it great. Right. You know, one of ours, right. and then he. Damn him. I'm, I'm just saying, I, mean, I don't know what the new girlfriend looks like. I have no idea, but can we just please do, because there's two sides to every story. We don't know what this man has done to this woman to make her come to his house with three weapons. <laughs> okay, so Reese Witherspoon and her husband, Jim. Hold on. <laughs> Every time I talk race, I need a drink. <laughs> they were arrested over the weekend in Atlanta. Jim was pulled over after midnight, when you know nothing good happens. <laughs> pulled over on suspicion of DUI after he weaved into the wrong lane. Reese was instructed to stay in the car, but she kept ignoring the officer. She started acting up. When Reese got out of the car the second time, the officer arrested her for disorderly conduct. They were both booked and re I bet you that was the best sex ever. When they finished, <laughs> 
these are the mug shots. And Reese was allowed to look down, I guess on account of she's white, because... <laughs> Let me just talk to the black women just for a moment. <laughs> Sisters, you know we would have been thrown in a cell for taking a mug shot like that. She's a, she's a <laughs> By the way, not a laughing matter. If that was one of us and our man was being arrested, we would have been shot and killed right there trying to get out of the car and defend our man. Please don't be uncomfortable, white people, but prejudice is alive and well. And we're gonna talk about it every chance we get here on the show. Don't feel uncomfortable, but I'm just saying, if this was a black couple, this would have gone a whole nother way. race talk. It, it bonds us all, I guess. Justin Bieber. Oh. <laughs> well, I haven't talked about him in a moment. Some of you all were reading me the business on uh, my Facebook page saying, how come you haven't, ta you haven't talked about Justin Bieber and, the, you know, the racist stuff? Because I'm over talking about Justin Bieber. They slipped it into my notes this morning, so. <laughs> Look how he's looking at us, too. Just a Jerk. Cute, but a jerk. Anyway, he got off the hook um, for the racist rant claim, people say, because nobody's talking about it. Nobody even cares. I, well, you know what? You know why I didn't talk about it? Because I do believe that Bieber said what he said. Well, first of all, we saw, we saw the, uh, the tapes. And I also believe um, that he is one of those types of people to make the next part of his career off the backs of blacks. You know, his, his rapper friends, like all these Negroes in this picture right here. <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and I also believe that when he gets around his white friends and nobody's looking, that he's got plenty of black jokes. I just, when's he going away? Oh, I hate him. I mean, I'm, no, I don't hate him because I don't hate anybody. But I, I have a strong dislike for Justin Bieber. Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth are over. I could see Miley going black before she goes back, though. <laughs> Don't you? Before she goes back. Like, like, oh, come on. I mean, I, like, I see her marrying white. Do you know what I'm saying? But I see her going black before she comes back. <laughs> Let me tell you about this guy. Allegedly, they've been dating for seven months. I guess he is to Miley, who, um... Who's the chubby man from down south who hooked up with Justin Timberlake? Timberland. Timberland. Uh -huh. <laughs> he alleges that he's 25 years old. <laughs> he said more like 35. Look, well, he's alleged to be 25 years old. I don't know. All I know is, is that. And then um, when we were in our meeting this morning, somebody said, do you think that uh, Miley's parents are upset that she's with a black guy? And I said, that needs to be the least of their worries with her. Okay. This is a long way from um, that other little boyfriend that, that, you know, that L Liam Hemsworth. Show them together, yep. Different time. She even dressed differently, ladylike. You know what I mean? There's that tongue and just that irreverence. And anyway, inside, Miley talks about the falling out, um, uh, the fallout of the VMA performance that she did. She said that she's not bothered by the critics, but what does bother her is people who say that she's trying to be black. Some say Miley tries uh, to appropriate black culture and use black background dancers like props. Um, I, I would agree. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I'm just so used to it on account of the world around us. I'll explain in a moment. We talk race relations here on the show, so please don't start scratching and get nervous and ticky, okay? <laughs> White people take this in the best way. <laughs> Some of you have been appropriating my people's culture longer than we've, many of us have been alive. People are people, and appropriating culture is appropriating culture, whatever, whatever that is. The thing is, is that when young white people uh, do the black thing, 
These same young white people grow up to be middle-aged white people. They take off the whole black accessory thing and they become white again. I've watched this happen. You know, I grew up in a very mixed community. I watch, you know, my son now, you know, with his, you know, his friends and whatnot, and you know, white girls loving up little black Kev, and you know, <laughs> and and it, and his white friends sagging lower than my son could ever sag, and I have to, you know, and yo 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 and all that stuff. Just. Yeah, Miley, I, I mean, I see it, and it, you can't pick up black and put it down. Black is something that you are and it is. That's all. How did I communicate that whole message, Suzanne? Was that messy? Well, Wendy, you're my homie. Oh, <laughs> well then yo, 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 Suzanne, you get it. Sometimes I'm having a conversation with our son and he'll say ain't. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> you, don't, we, you don't talk like that. Like, like stop. What's with that? <laughs> with. Anyway, what, what we tell our son um, is, you know, other kids outside of black can play that dis, dat, and don't and sag their pants and talk with their hands and pull the hoodie up like Trayvon and try to be belligerent. But around the age of 25, when they realize this is not working for me anymore, I don't want to be black anymore, then they go back to being white <laughs> and you're still black and they affected you to be cool back in the day, but they've gone off and earned higher degrees and are working on Wall Street while your black behind is being cuffed up on the parkway. So don't play that. It's disgusting that we're still dealing with this black people catching cabs in Manhattan thing. <laughs> you know, and Al Roker is the latest victim. Well, Al was with his son and he was taking his son to a much needed doctor's appointment. Can you imagine passing by these two? I mean, they look so innocent and lovely. They don't look like they have guns. Well, they, the, the cab driver passed Al and his son and picked up the white man instead. Oh. Now, white people, you know we talk race, so don't get all fidgety. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, there's something in this country called white privilege. Yes. Yes. And it's horrible that we still have to deal with it. Somebody in my morning meeting said, well, and this is a white person, by the way. <laughs> said, well, Wendy, maybe the cab driver passed Al because he doesn't like Al. Aww. I was like, aw, you nice white man. You sit down. He passed Al because Al is black. We know what it is. Yeah. Now, I'm not a cab taker. You know, I, I prefer an Uber. You know, I don't go down in the hole. Or I prefer to drive myself. But I did take a cab. Um, just to um, give a different presentation to my after show. If you ever watch the after show, it's at wendyshow.com. It's after the show, then I do a show. I took a cab uh, early during the summer, last summer. And Tristan, my cameraman, was right behind me. And so I'm the one hailing the cab, and the cab driver doesn't stop. Now, mind you, I got a, a long, nice wig, and it's blowing. <laughs> You know, and I'm serving spaghetti straps and a, and a little leg, and I'm hailing, and people are high wending while I'm hailing. The cabs are just zoom, 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 zoom. No, no, don't worry. So then Charles says, Charles, 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 Charles trying to walk away. Charles, um, uh, he's my right hand road dog. Charles says, well, Wendy, get back on the sidewalk. Let me get the cab. I'm like, look, Big Black. <laughs> if, if they're not going to pick me up, then they definitely aren't going to pick you up. <laughs> so then Charles takes the camera from Tristan, and Tristan's white. And Tristan hails the cab. No, yeah, yeah. We had to have a hailation by Tristan in order to go someplace. So, well, you know, it is what it is. But you know what? Here's the thing. My thought with this Al Roker thing is he filed papers and he's talking and he's complaining. Part of me feels as though it's partially a waste of time because it's a lot to get caught up in the court system about something like this. But the other part of me feels like lessons like this still need to be taught 
uh, to everyone, but particularly our kids. Like, this was a great lesson for his son. His son is growing up privileged in a multi-million dollar household and might think that certain forms of racism just skirt over him when really it's important for him to understand that, nope, black is black to a lot of people and they just don't care. I have one thing to say. I guess I've said more than that, but... <laughs> All right, I have a lot to say. Damn it, man, why can't we all just get along? <laughs>